All right, guys. Uh, this is a video on naming ionic compounds without a transition metal in it. And remember, the transition metals are in groups three through twelve on the periodic table. So we're going to use metals that are in one, two, um, and sometimes in column thirteen or fourteen on the periodic table. So um, an ionic compound is something that you guys must know, and it's just a, a metal and a non-metal when they're bonded. Um, basically, if it contains a metal, then you know it's ionic. And when you look at the periodic table, you can tell which is a metal um, because pretty much everything to the left of column 13 is going to be a metal. Um, so if it doesn't contain a transition metal, we drop the suffix and add IDE to it. Um, so you will always write out the full name of the first element, which is always the cation. So in our first problem, sodium bromide, NaBr, you would write a sodium and then bromine is the element but remember we drop the suffix I and E and we add I D E so it's bromide then looking at the next one sodium is used again and so we're going to write the full name of the cation sodium and remember the cation is of course the positive uh, metal and then chlorine but remember drop the suffix add IDE chloride then the next one we have MGH2 MG is magnesium so we're gonna write in magnesium and then H2 the 2 is just there to confuse you we are not gonna place dihydrogen in front of that or dihydride because it's not a covalent compound that only applies to covalent you simply disregard the subscript and you would drop the suffix of hydrogen and you would add IDE so it would be hydride and then the last one same thing again we have a two subscript do not let that confuse you uh, we're just simply going to call this potassium and then oxide, dropping off the suffix of oxygen and adding ide, IDE. So that's how you do it, uh, just straightforward if you're given a formula and then you have to write the compound's name. Remember you write the full name of the cation, the first element, um, and then you will write uh, the uh, prefix for the anion and then you replace the suffix with IDE. Now let's go the other way let's do it backwards where you are given a compound's name and you have to figure out how to derive the formula from that so let me scroll down um, so calcium phosphide calcium uh, the prefix for calcium is CA and then phosphorus um, or phosphide is uh, just a capital P in this problem though um, we have to think about the charges that are on each of these uh, elements when they ionize or when they oxidize. So calcium carries a 2 plus charge. Phosphorus carries a 3 minus charge. And we know that from the valence electrons. Calcium has 20 electrons. It wants to lose 2 to become stable to have a total of 18. If it loses 2 electrons, it's now going to have 2 more protons, and thus we have a 2 plus oxidation state. Phosphorus has 5 valence electrons, so phosphorus wants to gain 3 electrons to get to 18 electrons. Um, once it has gained eight or 3 electrons, it's obviously going to have 3 more negative charges than positive, so that's why we write a 3 minus charge on it. Now, in uh, naming, we can do something easy here. We can do the crisscross method. Um, it's where you take the oxidation numbers and you pull them down. Um, and then you would rewrite them as subscripts. And so our balanced, our neutral chemical formula would be Ca3P2. Um, and that's how you would write calcium phosphide. So remember, when we're talking about the oxidation states, you can do the crossover method. Just remember that they always have to have a net charge of zero. Net charge of zero. So when we do this, we can go back and check behind us just to make sure we had a 2 plus charge on calcium. And so a 2 plus means that we have a total of a 6 plus oxidation state on calcium. And then phosphorus has a 3 minus state as a single atom. But since we have two atoms, it has a 6 minus charge. And so therefore, 6 plus, 6 minus neutralize each other. And so 
thus this compound is neutral. Um, so our final formula once again was CA3P2. Now, let's look at the next one. Let's look at potassium oxide. Potassium has a net oxidation, or an oxidation number, excuse me, an oxidation number of um, 1 plus. It has one valence electron. It wants to lose one valence electron rather than gain seven because that requires less energy. Um, so if it loses one electron, it's going to have a 1 plus oxidation state. Oxygen has a 2 minus state, has 8 electrons total, 6 valence electrons, and so it wants to gain 2 electrons in order to become stable. So all we have to do here is crisscross again. You're going to pull the 2 down from the oxygen rises the subscript on potassium. You're going to pull the 1 down. Of course, we don't represent the 1 as a subscript, and so you would write your formula as K2 0. Oh, zero. I'm sorry, K2O for oxygen. Um, and so that's potassium oxide's formula. And then let's do one more together. Looking at aluminum bromide, aluminum has an oxidation state of 3 plus. Its atomic number is 13. Uh, and so it would rather lose three electrons um, uh, and uh, drop that third or second energy level, excuse me, third energy level, sorry, third energy level. And then bromine um, has one valence electron. I'm sorry, seven valence electrons. It's going to have a one minus oxidation state. Um, and so once again, crisscross. And so this one would have ALBR3. And that would be your final answer for aluminum bromide. Sorry about the uh, confusion there on the oxidation states. I was getting ahead of myself. Um, just remember that you have to find these oxidation states first, um, and then you can crisscross, and that's about the easiest way that we can solve these problems.